Whoops. <laughs> Good start. Alright, g'day folks. Welcome to take four. Um, okay, so this tutorial we're going to be talking about data alignment first of all, because um, to understand the SSE movement instructions, um, you've really got to understand data alignment. Plus it's an extremely interesting topic, so we'll just scratch the surface here today. But pretty much what it comes down to is um, the alignment of data refers to the uh, address a particular element has and what that address is divisible by. So you want it to be divisible by powers of 2, pretty much, uh, since everything in computers is powers of 2. Uh, data is said to be 2-byte aligned if the address that the data is on is evenly divisible by 2, or is an even number in other words. Uh, likewise, if the address data is on is 4-byte aligned, then it's evenly divisible by 4. Alrighty, so you'll sometimes hear something like, um, you know, uh, data must be on a 16-byte boundary. That means that the data must be aligned to 16 bytes. Alright, so not only does data have alignment, but segments also have alignment. So our data segment and our code segment is also aligned. And uh, this is just a reference to where the first item of that segment appears. So um, usually we use dot .data or dot .code to start our data and code segments, but these are actually macros in Massim, the macro assembly. He's very good at ma uh, macros, this Massim. And um, I think dot .data and dot .code, I think, anyway, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think they're 16 bytes aligned uh, for us. But if you want a bit more flexibility, you can specify the alignment yourself. So it's slightly longer winded, but here's an example here of um, a manually defined data segment without using the macro. So the first thing that you give it here is the name. I've chosen underscore data. And the next comes the segment keyword, saying that uh, you're defining a segment. And after that, you've got your options. So the only option I've used here is align 128. And what that means is that the very first byte of the very first item I define in my data segment is guaranteed to be on address evenly divisible by 128. Cool? Okay, and at the end of your um, segment, you've got to say the name of your segment again and end S for end segment. Okay, so the number up here in the align directive is uh, any power of 2 up to 4096. Alrighty, so I just chose 128 here randomly. Uh, usually you'll want 16 there. Okay, so there's some special alignments, or some, some often used alignments, and uh, Masson provides some keywords to mean these. We've got byte, which means align to one. Align your segment to one byte. That's pretty useless, really. It means don't align it at all, pretty much. Um, you can say word, dword, para, or page to mean 2, 4, 16, or 256 bytes, respectively. Um, usually you'll want para, which is exactly the same as saying align 16. Okay, so usually your uh, segments will be aligned to 16. Or just dot data is what you'll put there. Alrighty, so there's actually two align directives. The one that we've just been through is uh, for aligning segments. And you can also use exactly the same thing, or it looks the same, but it actually means something different, in the body of your segment. So in the body of the segment, if you've got align and then brackets, um, what you're doing is aligning the very next thing. So, this is a different directive, and it doesn't take the same operands. Uh, the one in the body uh, can only be aligned to 2, 4, 8, or 16. All right, So you can't go all the way up to 4096 within the body of a segment. Only at the start of a segment can you align to that sort of, you know, bigger numbers. But uh, within the body, you've only got 2, 4, 8, or 16. So, oh, also this one, you don't need brackets either for the uh, align in the body of a segment exactly the same. Anyway, this means that this byte here that I've defined on the very next line, and I very cleverly left off the E just here, <laughs> uh, this byte here is going to be on an address that's evenly divisible by 16. Beautiful. Okay, you can also use a line in the code segment, and it looks rather like this. A line 8, MOV EAX 200. So I haven't even put this uh, MOV in a procedure. Uh, note that you don't need to. It doesn't matter. It's just sitting there in the code segment. Nothing's going to call it. But um, this, this align 8 just here refers to the actual machine code of the MOV EAX200 instruction. So this is going to be machine code somewhere in RAM. And what we've done here is asked um, 
asked the CPU, or not the CPU, asked um, the assembler, Massim, to guarantee that the very first byte of that instruction is on an address evenly divisible by 8. And the reason that we do this in the code segment is because um, the CPU especially loves to run tiny, tiny loops um, whose head, or the label at the top of your loop, is aligned to 16. So if you put a line 16 on a line just before the top of your loop, you might, um, it won't always happen, but you might get a few more percent performance for doing nothing more than that, just aligning your loop to 16. Give it a go. Who knows? Okay, so what? Um, natural alignment. Okay, this is um, just another term. Something is said to be naturally aligned if uh, the address that it's on is evenly divisible by the data's size. Okay, so natural alignment for bytes is anything, since if you think about it, bytes are you know one byte long and everything's divisible by one. So all bytes are naturally aligned. Uh, words on even addresses are said to be naturally aligned. D words or floats. Yeah, single precision floating point numbers are naturally aligned on four byte boundaries. Uh, of course, your Q words on eight byte boundaries, your DQ words on sixteen byte boundaries, etc., etc. Good, good. Okay, so the CPU accesses naturally aligned data quicker than it does not naturally aligned data. Um, for SSE registers, or, or for 128 bits, which is the size of the SSE registers, uh, natural alignment is 16 bytes. You know, they're DQ words, double quad words, so 16 bytes. So some of the SSE instructions uh, only work with aligned data, or data that's aligned to 16 bytes. And you get a protection fault and your program crashes if you don't, uh, or if the instruction is uh, run on data that's not aligned. Um, this is for performance, these instructions. Alright, what am I talking about? I'm talking about assembly, folks. But um, here I've got a bit of an illustration. So over here I've drawn RAM, okay, on the uh, right hand side, and on the left hand side I've got just a sample data segment that I've written out. And I've color coordinated this to um, yeah, show where it's going to be put in RAM. Okay, so a few things to note. First of all, uh, this very top box just here. Uh, these are all bytes, by the way. Single bytes in RAM. Uh, this very top box just here is your data segment. That's the very start of your data segment. And since I've got data segment para just here, remember that para means 16 bytes aligned, um, we know that that spot just there is evenly divisible by 16. We don't know what it is, um, but it's evenly divisible by 16. Uh, over here I've got just the final two digits, one or two digits of the um, address. And I've only counted up in two. I don't know why. But um, yeah, so this first box here is your data segment plus zero. And that's 16 bytes aligned. Uh, then we've got data segment plus one, then data segment plus two, three, four, five, six, etc., etc., etc. All the way down to one F is going to be this box down here, the very bottom box. Okay, so that's not the actual address just there. That's going to have a bunch of numbers um, beside that. But we don't care about that. All we care about is the final couple of digits because that's all we need to know to tell if something is uh, aligned by 16 or whatever. Okay, so byte 1. Define byte question mark. Byte 1 goes in the very first box just here. And byte 2, straight after it, logically goes straight after that. Alrighty, so that's in um, data segment plus 1. And the next thing I've defined is a 16 byte XMM word, and we can see here that's the uh, yellow boxes all coloured in. Fair enough. Uh, the very next one I've got a line 4, and then I've defined a D word after that. So what we had just here is uh, a free space in our data segment on uh, 12 in hexadecimal, which is uh, 18 in decimal, and 18 is not divisible by 4. So what Massim is going to do is put in two little spots of nothing, and uh, pad our data segment so that um, this D word just here in blue will be on an address divisible by 4 because of this aligned 4 just here. So 1 4 in hexadecimal is um, 20 and 20 is divisible by 4 so that's where our D word goes. Does that make sense? Just puts in two little padding bytes just here. They're ignored. Completely ignored. Um, okay, so the next thing I've got after the D word is a line 8, and I've defined a Q word. 
DQ and um, one eighth in hexadecimal is, uh, is that like twenty four or something? Yeah, twenty four in decimal, and uh, that is divisible by eight already. So the align eight just here does absolutely nothing. Um, but if we put you know extra bytes up above this somewhere, then we could still be guaranteed that Masson would be smart enough to pad, and uh, our Q word just here would always be aligned eight. Anyway, does that make sense how it, how it works? It, it pretty much just squashes everything um, together until you say align. Um, C++ has a few extra interesting options where it naturally aligns things. But, um, we're not going to go into that now. This is how assembly will make your um, data segment. Just squash everything together. Okay, shut up about... A yeah. Okay, I will. Um, 10 SSE data movement instructions. This is why we're looking at alignment, because we need to look at some uh, data movement instructions. So we've got 10 to go through here. These are fairly basic ones. Uh, for SSE, there's actually you know a multitude more. These uh, SSE extensions just have hundreds of instructions, so we're only going to look at 10 data movement instructions today, and that should pretty much give us uh, enough flexibility to do data movement for whatever we want. Uh, just a quick word on data types before we start looking at these 10. Uh, there's some integer moving instructions, real 4, real 8, and um, despite mov apps, which is um, move aligned packed singles and move aligned packed doubles, mov APD, uh, both moving 128 bits of aligned data, there is actually a difference. Okay? So always try to keep, uh, always try to use a particular SSE register um, as the same data type, each instruction, because there's a small performance penalty if you change it. Okay, so if you load into an SSE register using MOV APS, and then you start doing adds and subs, um, pretending that it's packed doubles instead, you'll get a small performance penalty. Okay, not much, if anything. Anyway, yeah, just try and use the um, appropriate instructions for whatever you're doing. Good, good. Uh, okay, so our first movement instruction, the mighty mov D. You might remember this from MMX. It makes another welcome return in SSE2. Uh, it's still called move double word, but um, you can actually move quad words with it now. And this instruction is for moving data to and from SSE registers and regular x86 registers. Uh, you can also move memory if you like. But um, one and only one of the operands must be an SSE register. Okay, so one has to be either uh, the source, the right-hand operand, or the destination, which is the left-hand operand. One of them must be an SSE register, and both of them can't be SSE registers. Okay, so although the mnemonic suggests moving 32 bits around, this instruction also moves 64 bits around. Yes, we said that already. Uh, the size of the value being moved, be it 32 or 64 bits, is determined entirely by the size of the source operand. Okay, so if you go mov dxmm0 uh, rax, then it's going to move 64 bits. If you go mov dxmm0 and uh, eax, then uh, it'll move 32 bits, since eax is 32 bits wide. Uh, if the destination operand, that's this one here on the left, is an SSE register, then the top is zeroed. Yep. Good. Okay, mov q. Uh, this moves a quad word. SSE2, this was introduced in. It takes uh, two parameters again. Uh, SSE registers or memory64. And this actually does just move a quad word, not like the other one called mov d, which can move D words or chord words, this just moves a chord word. And this moves either the low 64 bits of an SSE register to memory or 64 bits from memory into the low end of an SSE register. Okay. So that we're talking about the low uh, 64 bits of SSE registers. And uh, if the destination is an SSE register, then this instruction also zeroes the top. Okay, so do be careful, there's a lot of instructions that zero the top of these SSE registers. Uh, something quite nice is that this particular instruction here can take two SSE registers as parameters, which means, uh, because it's zero at the top, that if you go mov q and use the same SSE register for both operands, what you'll effectively do is uh, zero the top of the register without touching the bottom. Good stuff. Little trick if you ever need to do that. Zero the top. It's a good way to do it. 
Okay, MOV DQA. This is another integer movement instruction. Uh, move aligned double quad word. This was introduced in SSE2 and it's for moving 128 bit values between SSE registers or SSE registers and memory. Okay, so you can move um, between two SSE registers uh, or from memory to an SSE register, or vice versa. But your memory must be 16 bytes aligned. If it's not 16 bytes aligned, this instruction here will cause a protection fault, and it won't execute. Alrighty, so you stick uh, in your data segment, you say align 16, and then my array, blah, 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 blah. Um, then you can use this instruction here to move data into the SSE registers from that array. Does that make sense? Yeah, it should do. Alright, well if you can't be bothered aligning anything, then you can just go mov unaligned double quad word, or mov dqu, and this is also SSE2, it takes exactly the same parameters as before, only this one doesn't crash when you move unaligned data. Fair enough. Uh, it is a little slower, okay, so yeah, if you've got the option, um, align your data and use mov dqa. Um, this instruction here, mov dqu, if your data happens, by pure chance, to be aligned to 16 bits, it's quite fast. There's not much between this one and mod DQA. Anyway. Alright, so those were all integer moving instructions. Now we're going to move on to four floating point moving instructions. Um, this is mostly what SSE is good at. But um, yeah, here's four. So mod APS is move aligned packed singles. Mod APD, move aligned packed doubles and MOV UPS, MOV UPD. Um, okay, so these all take the same parameters and pretty much all of the instructions that move or manipulate single precision floating point values, these are real four values, are from SSE and SSE2 is uh, where all of the double precision floating point instructions come from. Uh, yeah, and like we said, it seems like these do exactly the same thing, you know, they move from memory into a SSE register or from SSE register into memory, but um, do be careful to use SSE registers uh, as the same data type each time, or you'll get a little penalty. Okay, so the aligned ones just here, the data has to be aligned, and the unaligned ones, it doesn't matter. Is that fair enough? That's how you move um, floating point values. Okay, so SSE is also really good at scalar. Uh, scalar is um, using the SSE registers and instructions, but just the bottom 32 or 64 bits uh, as a single value, instead of um, using them SIMD style. So this is how you move scalar values. MOV SS is uh, the mnemonic for the instruction MOVE SCALAR SINGLE. It takes two parameters, um, an SSE register and MEM32, or M and an SSE register and MEM32, um, and all that it does is moves the memory into the bottom end of a, an SSE register. And um, MOV SD moves scalar double, which uh, moves a real 8, or a double precision floating point value, um, moves the bottom, yeah, it moves a 64-bit double precision floating point value into uh, the bottom 64 bits of an SSE register. Okay, so all, as always before, we've got uh, SS, or scalar single instruction is from SSE, and SD, or Scalar Double, is from SSE2. Um, yeah, so Scalar, Scalar operates on just the lowest element of an SSE register. Alrighty, so if both operands are SSE, and the top, oh sorry, the top is not changed, so... Yeah, but if the source is memory, that's this left-hand operand, if this left-hand operand is memory, then the top of the SSE destination is um, cleared to zero. And that's it. So I think probably the most important thing to take from this tutorial would be um, the stuff on data alignment. I mean, all of those instructions you can learn at any time. But um, the data alignment stuff is really interesting. And uh, yeah, that's it. So thank you for listening. See ya.